Hello people of YouTube, it's your boy Skinny Penis at this point becoming a actual content machine since I found out this new great source of creating content in a very fast and time efficient manner sue me for that, nah um, I'm going to play Vincent next most likely two games since Vincent is not going to die fast enough to go for three but hey we're going to check out the Vincent actually I haven't talked about it at all at least in a video even though I had some replays um, there's not really much to say about the ship in general there's a whole list of uh, things in Vincent's favor that make it essentially super broken and busted and um, yeah well shows how completely disconnected the balance balancing department is from the game at this point since you have Yodo as a release cruiser, for example, um, even Marseille, even though Marseille is actually kind of okay, and then you have Vincent as a battleship, which is completely over the top. I mean, you get everything. You get the funny overmatch, you get decent dispersion, you get great HE, actually, the, essentially the broken British HE. You get a speed boost, uh, great concealment, so you're super fast. You get the super heal, you for some reason get Defe, uh, which is interesting since like every new battleship apparently gets Defe now. And you get the funny Torps and a 40mm deck, like there is so much uh, in favor of Vincent and it's just, it's really baffling at this point that it hasn't been nerfed. So what do we have here is matchmaking, we have submarine matchmaking but no carrier, that's pretty good. Obviously if you're in a battleship you don't want to see a carrier to be honest, um, at this point there's way too many griefers roaming the server with CVs. So what we're doing here is we have flank spawn, land of fire, I'm going to go deep into one line fast. Um, most likely I'm not going to see any broadsides early. Um, maybe there's a cruiser trying to go for this island in front of me, like a Des Moines or so, then I can get shots easier from the one line. But what I'm going to do here is I'm already going to load HE instantaneously and I'm going to shit HE into the Orgon. And I'm going to actually to switch to AP immediately because the there is a cruiser trying to get to the island and it's a good loo, which means I can overmatch most parts of his ship, specifically his deck. So I'm trying to maybe get one or two shots in here. And then I have to be more careful in kite to be honest. Because uh the Guden the drops are actually doing quite a large amount of damage. Um so I don't really want to sit permanently stationary in his troop in his drop range so he can get free damage on me that would be very counterproductive to be honest unlucky that I only hit four shells and most of them did zero damage and we're, I mean we're looking at a, a very interesting engagement here again we're playing against the YY and a submarine both going super deep on the the 1-2 line which is kind of extremely counterproductive for what I'm planning to do playing aggressively Actually, it's becoming more or less unplayable for me at the moment, and I have to hope that uh, either the submarine or the YY dies first. Um, actually, even if either of them die, it's still gonna be super hard for me to to make use of my ship here. I got like four. How do they run out? Yeah, they do run out. Um, don't know how he had ping range on me. I don't know. Is I don't, the ping range doesn't seem to be limited, um, or he just drove into me further uh, after pinging uh, after sending the torps. But yeah, um, for y you have to withdraw here. There is no point in playing this. The, as I said, like there's a YY on the one line. There's even a Haaland coming over now that could also go unspotted on one two line. And there's a submarine stationary nose in perma pinging me. So. Either diving the island there or going close is essentially a no-go. I can't play there. Then again, it's also not really that big of a problem because we're already looking at three battleships coming over here. So I can most likely play around them pushing because there's just more people now here. Uh, middle and the other side seems to be rather empty. Also from Kite I can uh, maybe try to at some point get oil slicks on the submarine. Though the indicator is so bad that you don't really know where to drop to be honest it's it's not a good look man for world of warships uh, if this is supposed to be ready for life uh, my name is actually not lucas anymore but fucking santa claus i think these torps might be able to home into me they definitely have range 
I think I fucked it. Yeah, I thought I could make them home again, but I didn't, so now they're like homing into my nose. Thankfully DCP will still be on. Um, well, yeah, I mean, to be honest, seriously, uh, very little I can do here. You would have to hope that your destroyer has a brain, which he didn't, he's dead, even though there's no radar in the enemy team. And you would hope that, you would have to hope that you can actually do damage to the submarine. Uh, very, very large amounts of damage in a very, in very quick succession. Actually, he's surfacing here, so we could just one-shot him here if we're lucky. Actually, I misled that one. No, actually, I got a really good hit. And this, yeah, okay, finally, okay. The submarine overcommitted. He had diving capacity left. There is no hydro on him. There is no way that he gets spotted that deep uh, with radar. So I don't know what he currently tried to do there, but it's definitely. Uh, an int moment from that guy. So finally, we had to kite out, hope that they overcommit. Well, they did. So now we can uh, go closer again and play the game. We can use this island here to um, essentially shield ourselves from torpedoes because we're still looking at a YY and a Holland running around here. Our GK is also monging in, kind of killing himself real fast here. Uh, same for our Ohio, most likely. So depending on how that goes, we have to turn out again and go into kite. Uh, I will monitor it really closely. I mean, that's the strength of this battleship, though. Like, if you have to permakite, you're not really like that. Uh, that's not really that big of a problem for you, just because you have the the cracked uh, HE from the funny British nation, which has nearly 70% fire chance per shell, and um, obviously with AR and stuff, I'm running 23.6 km, uh, 23.6 seconds reload. So instead of ch uh, chancing it on some good AP volleys, I can just proc DCPs, keep HE loaded, perma farm them out, and maybe win the game like this. But yeah, as said, there's a double perma fire, 5k. He's super saturated, so you're not getting like the chunky 15 to 20k HE volleys that are definitely uh, possible with Vincent. Um, Vincent does have less HE alpha than like Thunder, but overall in terms of game impact and how uh, easy the ship is to play, Vincent is straight up better than Thunder. The only thing that Thunder does better is it does more damage if you're undisturbed in kite in base. Because the better dispersion or like the, the, the completely broken dispersion on Thunder um, with the cracked reload is essentially just allowing you um, to pump damage even more consistent. Also the HE on Thunder is a bit better. Um, yeah, so like your damage is way more consistent on Thunder if you're undisturbed, but that's what, why I'm saying undisturbed. The moment you receive focus fire on Thunder, um, it's it's way more likely that you actually die. Concealment is equal to Vincent, essentially. There's not much difference. Um, and the moment you get focused, you're not running a super heal, neither are you running a 40 millimeter deck, so you're completely also you're completely overmatchable by Yamato and uh, Shikishima and Satsuma and stuff. So yeah, uh, in that sense Vincent is way easier to play. Like I would also say that the more inexperienced uh, you could even say the, the, the worse you are as a player, uh, the better it would be for you to play Vincent and uh, even pushing, obviously, it's not only like uh, kiting away, but it's also like pushing into people. Pushing into people with Vincent um, is way smooth, way smoother than pushing into people with a Thunderer, just because Thunderer, uh, Thunderer doesn't have torpedoes uh, in the front for like interesting uh, torpedo beats or torpedo jousting with other battleships or nose and cruisers. Uh, neither does it have the super heal on the 40 deck essentially. Here we do 11k. I think his DCP is still running. I'm going to pre-heal in a while. Like if I take a fairly decent hit here, I'm going to pop my first heal. Uh, we're going into the spec afterwards, but we're running improved repair party readiness, which means um, the more potential damage I take here in Kite, the harder it even becomes for those battleships to ever kill me because my heal become comes off cooldown super, super fast, which then means uh, it's really, really hard for them to even attempt to burst me down because they would have to do a whole lot of damage in very very short amount of time. This guy is stopping to hunt me because he like has no fire prevention and I'm just shitting HE into him which is a smart choice. I should start shooting the DDs to be honest at this point because they're just free pushing me. Uh, that could become a real big issue. I hope our submarine actually stays alive for a 
for a prolonged amount of time here. It would be fairly sad to see the submarine die at this point. I'm actually risking some damage from the Monty here, but I want to get a shot off onto the YY. Hopefully we got decent aspirin. Yeah, now I took a bunch of damage, so I'm going to pre-heal the first time. Yep, we got the YY out, because our HE is a very balanced uh, ammo type, and we're essentially just perma-kiting the flank. I mean, sue me for that gameplay, but you could see that my two battleships were running in for uh, unknown reasons. Um, there was a submarine that was essentially like trying to perma-ping and torp me, which is unplayable nose in, like I would just die. And as I said, there's the YY and the Haaland also uh, in a position to greatly uh, set up a some sort of torpedo crossfire. So trying to play aggressive there without any uh, effective, let's say, smart or um, experienced DD player and a great DD that could help you out, like a Smaland maybe or something. Without that and also without radar cruisers or hydro uh, cruisers next to you, it's essentially just suicide to go in there. Um, wouldn't recommend, it also doesn't make sense. It would just be pushing for the sake of pushing and not kiting and you dying uh, for that. Like, you're not really playing it optimally. Is that guy getting shotgunned? No. But you're not really playing it optimally if you try to push it in there. Um, sometimes kiting is the solution, as dumb as it sounds. Trying to get some nice hits on the Haaland here. Aimed a bit too far behind. Also, only got one shell hit. Um, we're killing the Guden. Sadly, we're we're losing complete spotting on everything uh, until our Haaland comes in between me and the Haaland. I can't really stay that close because their Haaland could definitely torp me out here. Vincent doesn't have that much basic uh, HP. Also, doesn't have the best torpedo belt. So torpedoes are definitely a threat, but you get the maneuverability to play around it. Um, and you see perfect uh, retardation gameplay of a Vincent here. Uh, you permakite with HE. You essentially out damage uh, all the battleships. Okay, I slowed down trying to dodge the Haaland Torps, but he adjusted for that beforehand, so I'm going to lose an awful amount of HP here. Also going to lose my... Uh, going to lose my ability to super heal most of it. I'm just hoping that our Haaland is going to go uh, in and spotting for me. Okay, there you go. We have uh, the Haaland spotted. Next reload, uh, we're helping our Haaland out. Hopefully we can win the trade like that. Our Haaland is opening up earlier though and seems to be a more efficient gunboater, gunboat player. Yeah, he's definitely winning that fight. Enemy Haaland is super confused. I should kill him here. Yep. Okay, finally. So now, even though we lost a lot of HP to the torpedoes, we're most likely not gonna die to the Yamato. Um, in a one versus one, if I can, if I can speed duke uh, most of his shots with my speed boost, and I could also go dark at any given point. So unless he does like 25k in one volley, uh, we're completely fine here. Uh, we're going to slow down. We're going to go into reverse to not lose range on him because he doesn't have a DCP. So I definitely want like uh, one or two volleys on him. And do keep in mind the dispersion on Vincent can be extremely cracked. Um, because it has battle cruiser dispersion formula, but the sigma values is super low. I think it's 1.6 or 1.7 sigma, so you definitely can get really, really bad dispersion salvos, but sometimes you can also get 9 out of 9 shells on target, and given the reload you have, um, you're overall a very accurate battleship. Okay. Go. Yamato getting cheeky salvos on our ass, meaning I'm dropping actually lower than I ideally would have liked to. Um, the problem here definitely was the amount of torpedoes we took, because if I wouldn't have taken like 20k torpedo damage, that is also mostly unhealable, I would still be able to heal back to around 30k most likely, or like at least 28, 27k or something, so that would give me uh, way easier time fighting all these full HP battleships because yeah um, guy doesn't seem to be that bad of an aimer so I'm going to give up the fight here uh, the only option I had to fight keep fighting him was to perma reverse into him but then my movement becomes super predictable because I'm just perma reversing he can aim for that pretty easily so I'm essentially unable to to play with my throttle um, 
My biggest threat here is actually that the Yamato, because he doesn't have anything else in range, is going to keep shooting me at 24km. So I'm actually going to keep playing very passive, because the Conqueror is not really a threat at that range. Like He can only HE spam me, and that damage I can easily heal. Also his AP isn't potent at all, so yeah. I stay at range, even though I'm low HP. I have a heal ready um, at any point. I also have the Cunningham proc, which is very, very good. I'm actually going to pre-heal this, because both people, both people are shooting me at the same time, so there's a likelihood that there's enough damage, or there's more damage on me than 15,000. Actually, that guy got 4k. Well, it wasn't that bad, I accelerated out of it uh, in time. Conqueror got double fired perma by our Austin. Austin reload boosted. Conqueror DCP because of engine damage and flooding. It's gonna keep shooting him with HE at this point. Don't even care about AP at these ranges. Um, Monty tries to shoot us again at 22 kilometers, giving us pretty much an easy option to just dodge him. Look, like the, the shell travel time is so long that since I saw the shot, was aimed way ahead. Easy easy uh, time to dodge, you just slow down. And now we can actually re-push. Like, slowly but surely, their battleships are dying down. Um, Thunderer dies down, Yamato, Monty. In general, it was just r good play from our Haaland. Um, two things. Thankfully, their submarine misplayed, so I could instantaneously one-shot him. The YY got spotted for some reason. I don't know why. Maybe it was the Moscow Raider behind me, but the YY was suddenly spotted which meant I could kill him with the one salvo. Um, so those two threats were eliminated and then the Haaland decided to turn into the cap not knowing where our Haaland exactly is. And our Haaland, because he was closer to his teammates, like me and the... I think Moscow was still alive. Um, because he was closer to us, he decided to go in and take a gunfight with him. So that's um, that's needed as a battleship. In general, like if you're a battleship player and you try to play BB solo, you're at the mercy of your own destroyers and the enemy DDs. Um, in most scenarios, it's uh, it's decided very early by both by the destroyers of both sides. Um, if there is an e extremely uneven fight or exchange, where most of your DDs die and the enemy's DDs stay alive, it's very hard to come back or play the game because you're just perma spotted most likely. You have to care too much about torpedo angles. Um, you can't really play aggressive anymore, that also means you can't go for the cruisers that easily and stuff. Because Vincent is not the best AP sniper against cruisers at all. It has very long shell travel time. Um, even though the AP overmatches, uh, the faster and the smaller the cruiser becomes, the, the harder it is to hit them at range. Um, so yeah, it's mostly decided by the DDs. So I mean, if you played BB, that would definitely be the class where diving up with a competent DD player is key. I mean, not only key, but it would definitely help greatly um, in terms of gameplay. You can definitely get uh, way more damage if you play with a competent DD player. You can get uh, way easier games in terms of you holding position, keeping your HP, getting angles, um, generally having game impact. Because the closer you are to a target in a battleship, cruiser, DD, it doesn't matter what ship it is, the closer you are to a target in a controlled fashion, the more damage you can pump out. It's just that simple. Um, and also now, now proc the second uh, Cunningham achievement. Cunningham is a super good commander, obviously, for Vincent. Uh, Vithera is a very likely achievement in this ship. Uh, so is getting two kills, which allows you to get additional consumables. Um, yeah, but the moment you take a lot of torpedoes or citadels in Vincent, obviously you don't really need a fifth heal. It's uh, pointless. We're ending up with 240k. I would note at this point that I tried playing it beforehand, the Vincent, and I played into a submarine destroyer flank as well. And the enemy submarine was a super griefer and uh, ours was completely demented. Our DD didn't play the flank at all. Their DD uh, played super close to me, like 6km in a shimmer. He was free to do that. So yeah, I ended up getting like 40k because I got griefed out. So very good content there. Um, there was essentially very little I could do. The submarine just kept perma-pinging me. So it doesn't matter what ship type you play uh, as cruiser or like what ship you play as cruiser or battleship the moment a submarine perma pings you and knows what he's doing you're kind of fucked so yeah 
here you can see like um, we're just loading perma he and it's essentially as effective at least as effective as conqueror and thunderer um, in this kind of game you wouldn't have done maybe that much damage on a thunderer just because your ASW range is, I think, very limited, so you couldn't have done really much against the submarine, uh, which I killed, as you can see here. And also, you weren't really undisturbed because the battleships like the Yamato aimed for me a lot, and then a Thunderer with a slower ship and only 32mm deck, uh, that thing overmatches you too much, so you would have had to play even more passive. But anyways, we end up with a lot of damage, we're going into the spec. Um, we have the Dreadnought achievement, uh, it's something you get a whole lot. Um, actually, I played a <laughs> Colombo game in between. Anyways, so if you have Cunningham, the best ship to play Cunningham on is most likely Daring. But uh, Vincent is second, if not the best ship overall. The spec I'm running is you pick ammo switch, you go brisk, and then you don't take uh, Grease the Gears or Vigilance and a one-pointer, but you go for improved repair party readiness. It's a super, super strong skill on this ship because of your low HP pool. means the the percentage based uh, reduction comes way faster and it's a super heal so getting cooldown on the super heal is is really really strong because you get to the next super heal faster which means if you get to that heal um, you're even going to get the third heal reduced even more and so on like and so forth so dying to HE is most likely very unlikely if you run that spec um, and then like normal tank stuff and actually you don't even need grease the gears because for some reason after all of the pros of the ship, the ship also has, uh, for whatever reason, 34 uh, second base turret traverse, which is a wee bit worse than Ohio and Kreml base, I think, but it's essentially the same. So you don't need it on Ohio and Kreml, you also don't need it on that, even though the ship already has a lot more going for it. Um, the modules are obviously reload mod and the rest is the same. I'm not even, not even going to show it. You should probably run the speed boost coal module because the speed boost isn't that long on the ship so um, I think it's only like two and a half minutes with the module so if you have the coal to spare then definitely play it otherwise um, yeah I mean it's not gonna change that much about the ship you can still use a speed boost early to get into a flank if you have a spawn for that and you can also keep your speed boost if you have to desperately run away uh, next benchmarking is actually super ships. Um, we have a Kunming tester. We have two submarines again. For some reason, they're coming out of the red holes quite a lot lately. Um, and we have a carrier game this time around. That is definitely unfortunate, especially since it's a torpedo, very torpedo focused carrier. Like Malta has incredible torp alpha and flooding chance. We might be running into a uh, problem here. Obviously, he's a little piece of shit. Like. Uh, he's a very funny name, haha, -ha, I'm so funny, I'm naming myself in a very ironic way, and then I'm playing Malta and shitting on people, yeah, we all love it. Um, yeah, so, uh, in any case, uh, we have to be really careful that the submarine isn't doing the same thing as last time, uh, pushing in an unspotted way uh, into our butthole and perma-pinging us. Also, we have to care that the Kunming isn't on our side, because from what I know, the ship has potentially 30 torps uh, in one go. ship has 15 deep waters and a torpedo reload booster, and it's YY torps, I think. I don't know if they have more range, but it's at least YY torp range, which is 13.5 km. So, if the Kunming plays the flank and the submarine, it's the same story as last game. You can't play it. Because pushing into it is a death sentence. I have a Kite Goliath with me, uh, which is not going to go in uh, close to Hydro or Smoke Up. Uh, I also have a Yamagiri only, which can't really effectively hunt uh, the enemy uh, Kunming. You can only outspot him, but you can't really outgun him that easily. It's not like a Smarland. Um, obviously, a Smarland in this situation would be perfect. And here we go already. We have the Kunming on my flank. He turned out, sadly he got unspotted right before I shot. I hope it's still on target. It is, it is. I get 7k. I also knocked his torpedo tubes. I think I could have knocked them before he got the reload off. 
I'm having a real, real hard time now. The submarine starts pinging me now, I'm in deep shit. Also, the fucking carrier is coming too, so... The submarine is here, he's not going for me at this point, so... As I said, I'm, I'm again just kiting out from a kite. I'm not going to fuck with this. Um, it's way too risky. Can't drop the submarine yet. Play my... The Kun Kunming was spotted again. I really have to get rid of that guy. I hope either the... I hope either the Yamagiri drops him, or uh, torps him out, the torps are coming in flat broadside on him, I hope they hit. I would pray for that. Yeah, the Kunming torps are coming, I don't even see them, I would only see them when they actually hit my ship. I'm unspotted though, because the submarine dove. And I can shoot the Monty for now, but I have to be really careful about the Kunming. I have to essentially mind game the Kunming now with the torps. Though there's not really much mind gaming if he's a half decent player, he's going to spread the 30 torps in a way that I most likely eat one or two if I want to shoot his team. That's a real bummer. At least they're f pretty far away, so torpedoes spread and the submarine can't torp me at the moment. But yeah. A risky, risky operation here. I hope my submarine spots him again, then again I'm super far away from from the Kunming. Yeah, I'm 15k I'm away. I mean, I made him half-life, but I'm so far away that I can't even effectively shoot him. Then again, we have the same situation as last game. There's two additional battleships coming in, one BB already here. Um, it's essentially rinse and repeat. I'm the only battleship currently on this flank. We only have a Goliath and a Yoshino and Kite here. From the looks of it, our Yoshino is also running some shitty range build because he's further behind than me, but still shooting people without a spotter plane up. So. I would really assume that this guy is running some range Yoshi build. Well, well, well. I mean, I hoped I could get some some matchmaking where I could play more aggressive. I mean, obviously tier 8, 9 matchmaking without submarine, without carrier would have been the perfect treat. And lots of torp DDs. Without lots of torp DDs. But then again, what's the point of showing off a broken tier 10 battleship? while running down tier 8s and 9s. I'm going to turn my guns now to this side and going to kite the core first. He's coming in way too aggressive. Um, maybe I'm even going to kill the Schroeder first of all. Um, I'm also uh, I'm also getting the vibes that the, oh, actually the Kunming hasn't turned back. Okay, that guy's dead. It's really good. I'm getting the vibes that the Kunming actually turned back or is turning back into me, which would be disastrous. Thankfully, their submarine is fucking off to Narnia while our submarine just stays on the surface and keeps the battleships permalit. I mean, there's not really any risk of the submarine just randomly getting spotted here. He outspots the Kunming. Um, the battleships can't spot him, or like it, he, he outspots, the, I mean, obviously the battleships and the cruisers in a way that they can't just spot him. If he has a brain, he just dodges it. Yeah, and we just keep sitting here and kite, to be honest. There's not a lot I can do. We have a carrier, and the carrier would be the solution for the submarine and the Kunming at this point. He's uh, he's a midway, so he has the HEs, uh, the HE bombers. He could kill and finish off the Kunming for free. Would be very easy for him. Submarine is spotted in radar. And maybe maybe the guy is in a position where he can't dive anymore. He gets hit here. Nope. Actually, he's beaching there. Everyone's sending his ASW in, but I mean, from ASW, from, from, from what I know, the ASW damage is not going to be enough. So we made the GK fuck off because everyone started HE spamming him. I mean, at least we have like the great, like, we have the Magino line here with a bunch of kiters while the submarine is keeping them lit. The submarine is most likely going to end up as uh, first place in our team by a wide margin because he's currently collecting like 300k spotting damage, unironically. Because he's the one spotting everyone. Then again, I don't know, man. If, if if battleships shoot someone else, sometimes the one that's getting shot in base is getting the spotting damage, which is rather remarkable. Submarine so decides to grief the Satsuma now while I'm loading a she. That is uh, literally a perfect scenario. The Satsuma is going to die really, really fast, and the Yoshino is not a threat at all for me. I should pre-heal now here. In case. In case. One of the battleships switches focus to me. Um, Kunming went to middle. 
which is perfect. I can just keep reversing into these people. I uh, can hold the 1-2 line. They can't push through. Um, the gameplay is disgusting. The gameplay is straight from C server. It's just disgusting. But if you just look at my team and how they position and how passive they are and what forces the enemy originally had here and what ships they also played, um, it's better for me to stay alive and keep control of 1-2 line because if they push through 1-2 as well because we already lost 9-10 and the C cap completely if they push through here too we're in deep shit like we lose complete map control may maybe even our carrier gets uh, focused out in base cross fired uh, because it's still stationary so I mean yeah it's disgusting but it's kinda what you have to do I'm getting really bad dispersion here submarine is back on me a big disaster. Our submarine went so far forward that their submarine is not really... Oh my god, we're having... There, Satsuma dies. I dodged the first set of torpedoes. Satsuma is dead. I didn't get any sort of damage out of that, which is whatever. I mean, I don't really care. Our second set is missing me too. I'm going to try and go dark here. The problem now would be though that the uh, submarine can just free push into me and I'm forced again into kite. It is... It is just fucking disastrous, man. The design of uh, super ships in general, like even if it's the destroyers, the design of submarines, the design of Malta. There's so much shit, I'm not even hitting a single salvo, so as you can see, man. Like, not that easy sometimes. It's not that easy. I'm losing range. I'm not spotted anymore at the moment. I'm going to pre-heal, so I get my sec my next heal of cooldown, hopefully before the submarine starts extremely giga griefing me. Sadly, I lost a lot of AA against the Yoshino HE, and again, I don't really think it matters that much. Um, I'm really debating what to do here. I'm not going to lie. The submarine being back here on the flank is really disastrous with the carrier parked on my flank too. Means that our submarine is griefing hard too though. Holy shit, he just fucking death struck the cruiser. I can load HE and pen the deck of Malta. I have the penetration. It's 76mm. Uh, so I can proc his DCPs and the submarine will most likely be able to fuck him. I think their submarine actually went for submarine hunting on our submarine. I'm going to shove myself into the cap now. Um, obviously we have to repush. Uh, guess we were patient enough to outlive the cancerous gameplay. I hope I can get a main gun volley out here too. 12k, it's kind of killable. My bombs hit really well when I get a gun hit in. Yeah, 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 yeah. 400 HP is a disaster, man. Uh, which way is he turning? He's turning like this, right? Turning back. Jesus Christ, man. This gameplay is just fucking horrible, man. I tell you, man. I'll tell you. This gameplay is just disastrous. This guy's trying to gamer turn out, actually. So I can load AP here and probably one-shot him. Got the submarine. Finally, dude. Finally. Holy shit. It's like last game. The moment the submarine dies, it's a sign of relief and you can actually play the game. It's crazy. I mean, their submarine wasn't smart like last game. So we got a chance to kill him. And we also got a chance to play the game, which is big. Now we got a fucking battlecruiser dispersion volley here coming in on the broadside. That thing has a large citadel. So yeah, that's a death strike. Really nice. <laughs> Like three sits. Nice. So actually, um, again, just incredibly lucky. Incredibly lucky that the enemy submarine in Kunming um, weren't that uh, weren't that good, weren't that experienced, because those two really had the chance to completely obliterate A flank, and because we didn't have carrier support, uh, our Yamagiri died super early for no reason to. And our submarine, I mean, our submarine was kind of okay. He kept spotting, kept zoning. Um, also, he essentially killed uh, 
half their team kind of on this flank and base with torpedoes. That's just it just shows how fucking disgusting submarines are, dude. It's literally safari tours at this point. There's so much random shit going on in randoms. You have the super ships, you have the super CVs, you have the normal tier 10 carriers that are essentially already super ships. Then you have the submarines that are griefing left, right, and center. Then you have ships like Vincent too that just sit in permakite with HE and are also like kind of unkillable unless, yeah, their submarine has a brain and kills me for free. Um, man, it's just, uh, it's just questionable the fuck's going on at this point in World of Warships. And there's no way this is productive for the, for the game, game's health and player count. Actually, we're getting, like, now we're getting really good dispersion volleys. Like, this is the Battlecruiser dispersion I talked of in the first game. You have the Battlecruiser dispersion with shitty Sigma. Uh, doesn't really matter overall, though, because you get so many, so many salvos. Your reload is just too, too fast. Um, we can have a quick look after killing the Monty at uh, how low my reload on the heal actually got now. I mean, that guy is going to die to the fires before shells even arrive. Yeah, well, we can have a quick look here. Um, it's nearly 20% off, and I'm still at 55%, uh, 55k HP. Um, my reload already. Uh, reloads in 61 seconds one minute so if i would get shot at now and i obviously have a super heal ready so i collect more potential while i get shot at then i super heal and collect even more potential i could reach like three and a half million and get my heal reload down to 50 percent or something in the process which would mean i get, would get to the fourth super heal or like yeah fourth because i got the cunningham proc again i would get to the fourth super heal in in no time so yeah in this scenario, uh, you can see that if Yoshino just perma spams you with HE or something, um, you're definitely getting a lot of value out of the combination of fire prevention and re improved repair party readiness. Um, what is interesting is if there's theoretically a Trump or a Guden Lu permanently missing their drops for essentially 10 minutes straight and never hitting you, um, you get a incredible amount of uh, potential damage out of it like you could reach three four million without even taking a lot of damage at all which then makes you probably unkillable anyways second game wasn't that strong and as expected i here you can see it our submarine got a lot of spotting damage and a lot of damage himself he also has combat scout as you can see like he spotted everyone the entire time for, for free like literally for free um this is how demented the class is and the guy just ends up with 3.3 base uh, obviously, they have a better, uh, better XP income, or base XP multiplier for spotting damage. I think. I believe overall they just get more XP. Um, but yeah, I mean their sub didn't do much either, and is ending up with 1.18. Um, yeah, it was like the first game, just AFK gameplay, playing into flanks that you can't really fight against unless you would have a very competent uh, DD player and a very good destroyer and maybe CV support on top of that even and your submarine being ready to permanently zone their submarine like a lot has to be done by your teammates for you in a battleship to actually play that flank um, Kunming would be the ultimate no-go for a battleship to push into like 30 deep water torps on a no hydro battleship like vincent with low hp pool low torpedo belt is no go like you shouldn't do it in any case um as i said uh the captain build just try the improved repair party readiness low base hp pool and super heal comp coupled with that is actually great value and here is the module since i forgot it of that was obviously you run reload um Obviously, you have to go either damage control or steering. I personally would go steering because you turn uh, out in and out a lot when you're kiting or nose in. Also because of your torpedo angles, for example, like you want to turn left, right, left, right, uh, torp. Um, this is obvious and you should run the, the engine mod if you can afford it. But that wouldn't change that much about the ship at all. Personally, I forget that it has def AA when a carrier is attacking me. That's the best part about the ship. I didn't even fucking realize it until like 20 games of gameplay. Um, in any case, this is Vincent. Lots of pros, lots of uh, l very little cons. Um, as you saw, you can just play it as a perma kiter. Uh, it's way more s safe and easy to play from kite with HE than Thunder or Conqueror. Um, but theoretically, you could also push in with AP loaded in the matchmakings that allow it. Um, maybe if I play another BB I actually get games where I could play the game. 
but this is it for Vincent definitely get it um, currently it doesn't seem to be a there, there doesn't seem to be any plans for it to be nerfed so enjoy it as long as it lasts uh, it's overall the, probably the most viable and uh, broken battleship at the moment on tier 10 and it's free for you to get so try it out and yeah well see you in the next video uh, take care this week and obviously put suggestions into the comments maybe what I should play on tier 10 what I haven't covered yet and mind that it shouldn't be the most useless ships overall in any case take care and see you soon